Hey, how's it going? Today we're going to learn about waves. Agenda. We are going to learn what are waves. We are going to learn the difference between transverse and longitudinal waves. In addition, we're going to learn about another classification that distinguishes between mechanical and electromagnetic waves. And finally, we are going to learn about features of waves. What are waves? Waves is a disturbance that carries energy through matter or space without transferring matter. So waves carry energy. They do not transfer matter. Now, there are two types of waves, transverse and longitudinal waves. Transverse waves go up and down. This is how a transverse wave looks. Examples of transverse waves include an athlete doing battle ropes, the light that is emitted from the sun, and ocean waves. Longitudinal waves, on the other hand, compress and expand. And the word that is used to describe this expansion is known as rare factions. So longitudinal waves have a series of compressions and rare factions. An example of a longitudinal wave is sound. When we make a sound, we make vibrations that travel through the air and compress and expand the tiny molecules that are present even though we can't see them. Mechanical versus electromagnetic waves. Waves have yet another classification, and that is whether they need matter to travel through. The waves that need matter in order for the energy to travel are known as mechanical waves. For instance, water waves need water. Earthquake or seismic waves need the earth. And sound waves need the molecules in the air. The matter that the wave travels through is known as the medium. Electromagnetic waves, on the other hand, do not need matter to travel. They do not need a medium. They can travel through a vacuum. Now, not that kind of vacuum. I'm talking about the vacuum of space, meaning there is no matter, such as a solid, liquid, or gas. This is why the energy that the sun produces can travel to Earth and provide us with the energy for our planet. Let's talk about some features of waves. The top of the wave is known as the crest. Now, what is the height of this wave? You will have 30 seconds to figure it out. In order for you to find the height, you first need to locate the crest. The height of this wave is 20 centimeters. We take a look at the y-axis and we can see 20 centimeters. Now the height is known as the amplitude. Amplitude is the greatest distance from equilibrium. The bigger the amplitude of the wave, the more energy the wave has. Equilibrium is simply zero on the y-axis. Let's look at another example. What is the height of this wave? You will have 30 seconds to figure it out.
the height of this wave is 40 centimeters. The bottom of the wave is known as the trough. Let's look at how to find the wavelength. The wavelength is the distance between successive crests or troughs. What is the wavelength of this wave? You will have 30 seconds to figure it out. The wavelength is 170 centimeters. We first need to find the ending point on the x-axis, and we see that it is 190 centimeters. We then subtract the starting point, which is 20, and that is how we get 170 centimeters. Lastly, let's look at what frequency is. Frequency is the number of complete oscillations full wave cycles, a point on the wave makes each second. You can think of it as how frequently does the wave complete one cycle. What is the frequency of this wave? You will have 30 seconds to figure it out. This zero will be our starting place. So let's count. One, two. So we see that the wave has two complete oscillations. Today you learned what a wave is you learn the difference between a transverse and a longitudinal wave. You learn the difference between mechanical and electromagnetic waves. And finally, you learned about the features of waves.